Next into the den are Somerset-based business owner William Pryor. This no. is the right way around. And his chief executive officer, 25-year-old Fenner Leek. Oh, it's green. After you. Oh. I've had 40 years on and off in the book trade, but Fenner is the boss. But technically it's William. They're bound together by their passion for the company. What excites me is that it's a combination of a very old technology, the book, with a very new technology, the internet. So it's a fantastic meeting of ancient and modern. Just like us. Just like <laughs> <laughs> Breathing. Will the den be the start of a new chapter for the unique duo? Hello, Dragons. I'm Fenner Leek, CEO of Book Barn International Limited. And I'm William Pryor, the chairman. Book Barn International is primarily an internet business that sells used books on a grand scale. We acquired the business in January 2013 as a turnaround project. It's now profitable, so we're here today to offer you the opportunity to invest £100,000 for 10% of our business, plus free books for life. <laughs> in 2016, the sale of printed books in the UK increased by 7.6%, whilst those of consumer e-books shrank again by 2.8%. In the year to August 2016, we sold 145,000 used and rare books through 20 internet marketplaces around the world, while our one-pound bookshop contributed £147,000 in revenue in the last 12 months. As well as selling lots of used books, we also have a cafe which contributes significantly to the bottom line. In the year to August 2016, we turned over £1.27 million and made a net profit of 34000 We've built the machine. Now your investment will enable us to grow our visitor numbers. That's visitors both to our Book Barn web store and most importantly to our rapidly evolving rare and antiquarian book department. Darwin Rare Books, named after William's great-great-grandfather. So thank you so much for this opportunity again uh, and please we welcome any questions you may have. It's a perfectly evolved pitch from William Pryor and Fenner Leek, who are asking for £100,000 for 10% of their Somerset-based book business. But in the den, where survival is always of the fittest, Peter Jones begins by exploring William's heritage. You mentioned in your pitch about a great-great-grandfather. Yes. Who's your great-great-grandfather? Darwin. For real? Yes, really. But in you shouldn't name. take any notice of that. I think that's quite big, isn't it? But it's not my achievement, though. I just happen to find myself being, <laughs> being the great-great-grandson. Wow. Can I just ask, are you related? No, okay. we're not. Mm. So how did this... I'm not being funny. <laughs> well, I am, actually. <laughs> how did this happen? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was working as a Sunday girl in the shop, part-time, one day a week. Um, and then I decided to take a gap year and it turned into a full-time job and they gave me this amazing opportunity. And how old were you when that happened? Um, 21. She's right. not, now 25. That's right. Great. That's fantastic. It is fantastic. Yeah. We're, we're really blessed. Good reviews all round for the entrepreneurs. And now former banker Jenny Campbell wants to audit their books. I love the fact that books are getting a resurgence. How many in a week will come inwards to the warehouse? We're cataloguing 5,000 a week, and then we're receiving thousands more on top. It feels like you're on the receiving end of a shoot of books <laughs> that's overwhelming you. Is it chaos? No, it's not chaos at all. It's quite orderly. Um, it feels almost cathedral-like because our stacks go so high. Um, it is quite, <laughs> it's quite no, wow. No, that's good. Yeah, can I just ask, if somebody came in and wanted to buy that stock now, what would they...? We would look for at least £2 a book. So what's the total value? Well, we, we have to confess, we don't know precisely how many books we've got. We know how many books are catalogued, which is Online. just over half a million. 
So approximately a million pounds worth of books. Yeah. What are your overheads? Uh, Go on. Um, so our biggest overhead is our staff costs, um, followed by our rent. Our rent is uh, £10,000 a month, plus we pay a surcharge on that rent of 2000 I should explain, 2015, we went into a CVA, a company voluntary arrangement, whereby we agreed to pay our then creditors 50% over four years, which we're still doing. And what caused that? In 2013, when we took it over, we discovered how unfit for the business the software was and the building. So we decided we had to, if we wanted to keep the business, to change both those. We were assured by an equity broker that he could raise a quarter of a million for us. And we funded all that, believing that we had this money coming. And when it didn't come, yeah. we got into financial difficulty. And how much money is now outstanding? All the company's debts yeah. are close to 400,000. The startling revelation of substantial debts has brought the den to a standstill. And Tuka Suleiman is wondering how the entrepreneurs are managing to keep their heads above water. From what I can see, you did 1.27 turnover. Yes. You made 34,000 profit. Yes. It'll take you about 12 years to pay off your debt at that rate. We are um, increasing our revenue all the time, so hopefully our debt repayment speed will increase. Um. Yeah. Fenner, you come across very credible, you come across very knowledgeable, and when you said your age, <laughs> I was taken aback. However, th there are too many skeletons in the cupboard. It's not clean. I'm not gonna be on that journey with you guys. Mm -hmm. I'm out. Tuka Suleiman is the first dragon to ditch the deal. Uncomfortable with the burden of debt, hanging over the book company. Will Jenny Campbell, with a track record in business turnarounds, be on the same page? William Fenner. What concerns me? You bought something, you got keys to the door, but it wasn't all well, was it, when you no. lifted the carpet, which then dragged you down and you went into the, into the CVA. I think you've got the next three, four, five years to really see the light at the end of the tunnel and some more hard spade work before that happens. Yeah. So it's not an investment for me at this stage. And I'm out. OK. I am very concerned that £100,000 is not going to achieve what you want it to achieve because you are starting from behind. It buys you time, it buys you some cash flow, but it still gets eaten up there. And that, to me, is just one step too far. I'm out. When I invest in businesses, it's got to be fairly simple. With your business, there are so many things that need to be sort of dealt with before you can really focus on the growth and putting money in, that's a, a key risk. I don't see I'm going to get a return anytime quick, uh, so therefore I'm out. OK. Thank you. Tej Lalvani is the fourth dragon to close the book on the business opportunity. Only Peter Jones remains, and he's still finding the story of William's ancestry a real page turner. But is it enough to make him invest. William, um, when you say you're the great-great-grandson of Darwin, <laughs> yes. you are talking Charles Darwin, I'm aren't you? I'm talking Charles Darwin. <laughs> I'll give you the full lineage, shall I? Charles Darwin was the father. He had five sons, and one of those, the third, was Sir George Darwin, who was my great-grandfather. His eldest daughter was Gwen. She was my grandmother, so I'm a Darwin even though my surname is not Darwin. It is a tough one. 
I think you've, you've done a really good thing to keep potentially the business alive and allow creditors to at least receive a large proportion of their money back. Yeah. Where I'm sitting, if you've got a million pounds worth of stock, yeah. even if you're selling them at a much lower price, I would have wholesaled several hundred thousand of my books to pay back those creditors, to take it back out of a CVA, get your company back and get ownership and drive that online business. Because if you've got six or seven hundred thousand pounds worth of stock left, you could spend time tweaking it and actually making more margin. And that for an investor is really exciting. And if you'd focus purely on that element of the business. I would have got over the line. So I'm out. But I wish you the very best of luck and I hope it wo you. all works out. Thank you so Thank much you. for your time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Despite several plot twists, the duo couldn't stop their descent into rejection and they leave the den without a deal. It's a shame about the, uh, the complications, but otherwise it's quite a nice business. Yeah. Nice to see books still selling and still alive. Yeah. It was a good reception despite the outcome. Yeah. Actually. We're happy with that. Are we? Are we? Yes, we're happy with that. <laughs>